Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people are showing up and it's blowing my mind. Hi, I know it is Labor Day weekend for people here in the United States, which means some people can't make it. Yay for people who work, because you gotta give hats off to that. And, uh, and I know that some people were saying, oops, I didn't realize I went to, I'm going to Finn's thing, and it happens to be at the same time. So we're missing some people as well, which also makes me sad. Um, but I have to make sure that I've got Alexandria on this list. Um, but I've got a number of you guys, and I'm hearing, and, and I was at the, at the blot. Uh, she was at the blot. That must be a thing. So, okay. <laughs> that blot, that from the oh, oh, okay. Because you just said Finn. Well, because people said they couldn't make it to this because they were being at his thing, and so I yeah, don't no, know no, what's I mean, going on. I know there's a lot of things that I don't understand, but you know, it's always good to know what you don't know or something to that effect. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a special weird thing. Yes, Alexandra's going to go first because she did ask for that, but. I've got special readings from a friend of mine from Chicago. Well, she's born in Wisconsin, technically, but, you know, I won't get into that. But that's why I'm wearing my Chicago shirt for Wes Heim, who is just having a book release about his life and living on the streets as an artist, as a musician in Chicago, and all of the amazing things that he learned, which I think is just the coolest thing. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing whatever on earth he's going to share with us because I'm going to give him some extra time to do that. In this first round, I will, as always, let John F. McMullen follow me, and then Alexandra is going to go, and then Wes. And Je Wes, I'll try to put you on multiple times in a round so that we can make sure we've got a lot of you reading because I hurt you and such. And thank you for all of you coming on this time when everybody's probably ditching. In the meantime, I am going to read as I usually do, a few poems, and I see Steve is connecting, which it might be Steve Leno. We'll find out. We'll see. And hi to everybody out there in the, uh, in the Facebook world that's watching live. But I would start by reading three poems, and the first one I'm going to read is from the CCND book. I usually start with a CCND book. I really, really like this cover. I was begging for the credits of whoever did this artwork, and no one would give it to me, so I gave credit where credit was due within the book. This is called Open Your Eyes, which is based on a title of accepted writing within the book. And this has got like the coolest image of an eyeball and somebody with a sight, like, I'm gonna get to that eye. And it's this thing gotten in the piece of the book is called Open Your Eyes. I'm gonna share one poem that is within this book, yeah, maybe I'll do another one. But I'm also sharing from this book a poem that also appears in a book that was released to mine from Cyberwit Press called Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Um, hosts I know John F. McMullen knows of this book, so he might have seen this one. This is one poem that was actually read in Chicago at a uh, feature of mine where other people read poems, and Wayne Allen Jones read this poem, and he won from the applause meter from the loss of applause, so he got to wear a crown that said he was the winner of the poetry game show. Um, this is a poem that he wrote, uh, that he read, called Oriental. Years ago, Chinese women bound their feet with cloths, forcing them to retain the foot of a child. The smaller the foot, the higher the class, the more helpless the woman, the more she needed a husband to care for her. It was normal for the daughter to cry and cry at the thought of hurting her feet so, of being unable to walk, of crippling herself. But the mother knew better. The girl would never find a suitable husband if her feet were like those of a servant, you know, a working servant. Handcuffs are like swatches of cheesecloth, slowly wrapping, layer upon layer upon layer. The tears falling land in her lap into a pattern as the daughter sobs and rocks back and forth. Poem from In Your Eyes from CCD Magazine that's also in the book. Da -da -da, shattering the glass ceiling. Um, I'm going through these. I will have to add a few more people on the list. Hi, nice of you to come, newbies. Um, this next poem I'm going to share with you is another one. I'm pulling ones that are appearing in other books as well in this reading. This appears in this book, um, but it is a periodic, a Twitterverse periodic table poem. Years ago, it's 
Wes may know, I wrote poems for every element in the periodic table, and Robin's husband said, hey, there's a contest for Twitter-length poems, and so I did a book of Twitter verse periodic table poetry. I will try to show you the image that comes along that's in both of these books, but I've got it on a color screen so you'll see it better, but it's a short one, and it's for Indium, Indium trying to get through. We live on smartphones and watch movies, share pics and texts and swipe her on our little screens. When I finally realize that you are on the other side of my screen, I, I panic. I move my fingers, failing to get through to you. Why give me what I need if we're meant to be apart? Indium is stuff that's on the back of screens, and it's really impossible to see, but if you check it out online, you can't even see the image, but there's like this image that goes with it for um, seeing things through your own screen. Indium, trying to sign through. But um, what I will do is share one more poem with you that's not in CCND. Ooh, I see newbies coming. I'll have to write them all down as additions. Um, but I'm going to, because I have to, share with you a poem from the book that Cyberwood is planning on publishing of mine in 2023 that is technically in the future called Testament and it is primarily at least in the first part all about um, women's issues and human rights post Roe v. Wade. So there are a lot of things on that and that is the primarily the first one. I'm sharing this one because I will not put it in CCND because I talk about people submitting stuff to the magazine. So it's not in there. So I'm sharing it with you guys. This is a newbie for you. It's called Journalists, Journalisming, the Story of Equal Rights. Copy editing and proofreading seem to take half of my work day, reviewing other people's essays, correcting spelling, punctuation, removing spaces at the ends of paragraphs, mostly technical stuff. But after reading an essay talking about how the 29th Amendment should be created after a number of states have passed anti-abortion laws after the overturning of Roe v. Wade to help women who need assistance, whom are who are impoverished and in more restrictive states, to help them get to free states so they can exercise rights that the government does not have the right to take away. This essay ended stating that the 28th Amendment, of course, is the Equal Rights Amendment. The journalist in me went into overdrive because I had a look, confirm with the U.S. government, even Wikipedia, although having equal rights seems like a splendid idea, the total number of U.S. amendments to the Constitution is only 27. I had to tell them to correct the ending to their copy, and the only change they made was the ending to say that the 28th Amendment should be the Equal Rights Amendment. I question if that is all that needs to change, though, because the Equal Rights Amendment introduced to the U.S. nearly a century ago, in 1923, failed to pass. The ERA was reintroduced in 1971, passing the House and Senate, but then went to state legislators for ratification, where it was rejected by a few states and was never passed. In the new millennium, even this very decade, the one that saw the overturning of Roe v. Wade and states taking women's rights away, that decade, the House Judiciary Resolution 28 does propose, quote, an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to equal, to equal rights for men and women. But again, equality for women is something still yet to pass. So, reading this letter to the editor for future publication, I questioned the ad essay, wondering if it misses the point, if there was any chance for equal rights for women in the United States, then their rights wouldn't have been removed by select conservative men in government in the first place. If anyone truly wanted to codify equality for women, it would have been done long ago, and we wouldn't be in this pit mankind has thrown us into now where we furiously claw our way back to the lights. Okay, angry rant number 27 from Janet. I've added a few more people to the list and then the middle of this will be Wes Hine um, because I always have, thank you guys, I, I always have John F. McMullen reading first because you make this happen with the Zoom meetings. Following him will be Alexandra and then Wes 
Wes Hine will talk about his new book that is going to be out. That I put the link that you sent to me into the um, chat feed so that everybody could see it. But I'm giving you guys the heads up and I will tell people who the next poet or performer is up after the next one. So please, John, my darling, if you're ready, if you could take it away.